Hello everybody and welcome back to one of my new favorite games, it's Main Assembly. So recently I was checking out a developer livestream for this game. Yes, if you didn't know, the developers livestream this game from time to time. Uh, I'm going to leave a link in the description down below. Follow them on their Twitch channel if you want to catch their live streams. But anyway, I saw one of the developers trying to build a useless machine. It's one of those boxes that has just a switch on it. And as soon as you flick the switch, a door opens and a robotic arm comes out just to flick the switch back in the other direction and then retracts again. So that's what we're going to be building today. I saw the developer give it a try, and now I'm going to give it a try myself because I really love the programming in this game. It makes everything super easy, so we're going to see exactly what it takes to build a useless machine in main assembly. Let's get started. So I think I'm going to just do a time lapse for most of the build process, but once we get into the programming, then I'm really going to have to start explaining things. So uh, here we go. Alright guys, so I went ahead and I built my useless box. It is finished and it was a lot easier to build than I originally thought. Um, I don't know what, maybe the, uh, maybe the developer stream made it seem way more complicated than it needed to be, but hey, check it out. So basically, so basically I just have this, uh, box here. I mean, clearly, very clearly it's a box. You know, let's just show you the useless machine in action and then, uh, then we'll get into the details of how it works. Because it's it's really so simple. You're gonna you're you're gonna be kicking yourself with how simple it is. Uh, so check this out. Check this out. We're just gonna use um, Mr. Dagron over here. Which, by the way, you guys had so many good names for this guy. Thank you so much for your suggestions. I think I'm gonna go with the name. I really don't know. There's so many good suggestions. So I think I'm gonna choose some of my favorites, and I'm gonna put up a poll in my Discord, and then have you guys vote on which is your favorite name. But anyway, back to the useless machine. Uh, let's just go ahead and go over here and push this with our little hand. He's gone, gone, push it. And there you go. A little arm pops up. The door opens, of course. A little arm pops up, pushes the switch back. Sometimes, uh, sometimes the robot arm's a little nervous about pushing the switch back, but, uh... <laughs> Actually, it consistently does that. That's kind of weird. Oh, <laughs> not sure what happened there. But yeah, this, uh, it works indefinitely and it's actually incredibly simple so let's go ahead let's show you just how simple this programming is it's really it's too simple too simple this is where it gets too simple look at this this is all the programming this, this is all the programming that a useless box needs all right all we're doing is taking the current angle of the top switch hinge we're just seeing if it's one way or the other way that's all we're checking and then if it's one way, we open up the door and we turn both the servos. Crazy, right? I know, <laughs> crazy. Uh, but one thing, this little node right here, I added this in just to set the motor strength of the switch to zero. So this is what allows external forces to push the switch back and forth without any resistance. It's kind of silly just how simple this is. So, um, yeah, I guess there's nothing else really to do other than to, uh, you know, push it again. Push it again and again. Yeah, that's right. What are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? Aha! <laughs> I don't even know why I'm having fun dominating this useless machine. Alright guys, so it's the next day and I realized something about my useless box build that I wanted to change, so I went back into the game and I made some changes. So here's the final version of the useless machine box thing. Oh yeah, I moved my seat like right to the front of the box, so uh, that's why my face is sticking out the front like that. I actually think it's pretty cool. But anyway, let's go ahead and get out of this. Uh, let's spawn in something that we can push this thing with, and then we'll take a look at uh, the programming and see what's changed. So I didn't like the original design that had the, uh, like the, the, the mirror mode hinges on the inside like that. And I was using servos back then. Uh, but this design actually uses all hinges. There's one hinge for the switch, one hinge for the door, and two hinges for the arm. And, uh, you know what? Maybe I could just park, like, right here. There we go. There we go. Just torture this useless box. <laughs> it's just getting faster and faster. But yeah, as you can see, it's just, it's like a very simple mechanism. Just this switch, or this hinge, and then these three hinges. So let's go ahead and take a look at the programming, and uh, show you exactly how this works. 
All right, so the programming, it is a little bit different than before, and that's uh, that's due to something completely unrelated. It's All right, so the programming is a little bit different than before. I still am taking the current angle of the switch, and I am putting this node down just to set the motor strength to zero. If this hinge is in the on position, then it's going to open up the door. If it's in the on position, it's going to do it's going to send a negative 1 signal to the other hinges, and that's just because the other hinges are built backwards. I don't know how I don't know how to properly describe it, but if I had built if I had built my useless machine with this starting point on the end of the arm and then built hinges in that direction, then these two hinges would be positive and this one, the door, would probably be negative. I'm really happy and I'm quite impressed with the programming of this game. It makes it incredibly easy. To give you guys an idea, if I were to try and build the same thing that, like this mechanically in a game like Scrap Mechanic, it would actually take far more parts, far more number logic parts, far more connections to make, and just in general, it's a more complicated process. So I'm really happy with the programming in this game, and honestly, I can't wait to get started building some amazing things with this stuff. So if you have any suggestions, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. I'm looking for ideas on what to build with this game with all this fancy programming. There's certainly a lot of stuff that I built in Scrap Mechanic that I'm probably gonna be recreating in this game. So let me know what you want to see down in the comments below. Uh, I'm just going to leave this video here for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!